Hello and welcome to this video on structure determination. So this is where you're going to be using the actual analytical techniques and interpreting their spectra. So IR, mass spec, NMR, a little bit on chromatography. So there's not much actual monkey work recall to do in this. It's more about being able to analyze, interpret and skill work really. It's something you've got to work on just actually pick up through experience. The IR, all you need to know is more or less just what you've covered at AS. Spot the actual bond, say where it is. So just labeling the functional groups, things like that. I'll put a link to it rather than repeating myself. In this video, I'm gonna go through mass spec and in the attached one, I'll go through NMR just since I'm not sure if it'll all fit into one video together. Now you should remember the actual stages for mass spec, so the five stages. And in the ionization stage, what you were doing is you were bombarding with high energy electrons at your sample. So mass spec is what's called a destructive process. Your sample, you're more or less firing electrons at it and you're gonna smash it up. Why that happens is obviously when you knock an electron out of a bond, so a covalent bond, shared pair of electrons, if you knock one out, then it's gonna become unstable and it's going to fragment. So this is what, it, what is happening here. Our actual molecular ion, what we are starting with in this case, so it's being ionized, it's lost one electron. Now because of that, it can fragment. The, the different types of fragmentation and all the rearrangements which could occur, alpha, beta, McLafferty, things like that, you do not need to know. So do not worry about thinking in your head, why is this happening? or trying to identify all of the peaks on a mass spec. You'll not be able to do it. It's way above sort of A level. All you need to be able to do is actually, when we come onto it, just smash things up in your head, think, what could I knock off to get that peak? So when this fragments, obviously we've got a positive cation there and the free radical. So in terms of when it splits up, one side is going to take the cation charge and the other is going to take the free radical. Now it is only this which you will actually see in the mass spectrum because obviously the positive charge, deflection, detection, things like that which you should be aware of whereas the, the free radical there is not going to have any interaction with it. So it's always that what you see. So an example using just this compound here for how that could occur. So if I say this is my molecular ion, I've just ionized it, I've knocked an electron out, this is going to smash up. What I could say, this bond here snaps. So you'll notice there the methyl free radical leaves and I'm left with this cation here. So in the mass spec, your molecular ion, 134. So remember when you actually look at the spectra, the molecular ion is the biggest number. It's the one furthest to the right. Uh, well, not technically always the biggest number, if you see a tiny little peak, 135, sort of plus one just along from that, it's probably the carbon-13 isotope, so you can just ignore that. So the molecular ion, in this case, 134. So what I would see here, since I've lost 15 there, 12 plus 3, then I'm going to see a peak at 119. In terms of how big the peaks are on a mass spectrum, it represents their abundance. So the taller the peak, then the more stable it is, the more it occurs. Now this ion here, the acylium ion, is very stable. It's one of the most common, well, common stable ions which you will be dealing with. So if I can snap off things to actually give me this ion, it boards well. You're going to get a lot of it. In terms of why I put the bracket round it and the positive charge there, it's because there is a bit of resonance taking place there. 
Mark schemes are usually a little bit generous in that if you put the positive on the carbon, it still allows it. So if you had that, the reason why what occurs we get that so there is a bit of resonance taking place there with the positive charge flicking between it's why it gets its bit of extra stability the mark schemes for well in terms of even your textbook at A2 tends to just say because the positives next to the delta negative there it helps just more or less cancel it out but the real reason lies in the actual resonance of the positive charge being spread over more of the actual species but as there it goes a little bit above a to that so quite a stable eye on there we will see lots of it so just getting back on track of what the the questions will be asking you in the exam about this it will either be sort of identify some common fragments which could come off it or will give you the fragments give you a couple of compounds and say which compound is this from so if you did the chemistry challenge paper recently then that's more or less what this is so this is from the January 2012 paper I believe in terms of you were given four compounds you were given some ions and actually just ask to match them up so both of these are isotopes both have got a molecular mass of 134 so we just need to start visually just smash it up in your head think what could i knock off to get further peaks so up here if i chop off that hydrogen there think of what i said this is going to be a nice stable ion forming there So I'm going to get a peak at 133 because I've lost one mass from that hydrogen free radical leaving. In terms of what else, well, um, you would get lots of them. I mean, it could decompose, benzene ring break up. The actual question paper, I think, just give you the, the numbers above 100. If I just check, um, yeah, just give you above 100. So... There was also another one where we could say either snap off all of that or we could snap off down here. So we would lose 15 plus 40 there, lose 29. So we'd lose an ethyl free radical like that. Now in terms of down here, obviously molecular ion, 134 gain, it's just an isotope of it. As I drew before the actual process there, I could snap off this methyl free radical. So I would lose 15. So I would get a peak at 119. So you'll notice in this, I'm not really going to get a peak at 119. Um, could perhaps snap off there, but it doesn't seem very likely. There's nothing stable about what's formed. The two major stable things what you need to remember are one, this is hyalium ion, which I've just mentioned, and also your primary, secondary, tertiary rule. So tertiary carbocation, more stable than secondary, secondary, more stable than primary. Um, so that's more or less it for mass spec as I said all you need to do is just look at it and just smash it up in your head where could I chop off to actually make these numbers so that's it for mass spec as I said I'll attach the next video where we go on to look at NMR